Boatworks Today is a viewer-supported show. To learn more on how you can get involved and watch extended ad-free versions of these videos, please visit our website, boatworkstoday.com, and click on the top of the heading where it says support this show. Thank you. Hey everybody, I hope you're all doing well. My name is Andy with Boatworks Today, and let's get started. One of the major components on this project, aside from all the glass and the painting, was that I was also going to be replacing the teak deck that was on here originally. Now the old teak deck, which has since been removed, I'll include one of those little pop-up windows in the top right corner here if you'd like to see that process, but the old teak deck was traditionally laid, meaning that there were individual battens held down by screws and put into some, some sort of black, gooey compound stuff that, well, ultimately failed. So when we were looking at different options as far as what we could replace this deck with, we the, the, the owner ultimately decided that he wanted to preserve the, or I guess, the original appearance of these Choi Lees. Ultimately, that meant that we were going to be replacing the old teak deck with a brand new teak deck. Now, decking has come a long way over the years. I mean, they are no longer laid down in by individual strips and thousands of screws. It's more of a panelized system where you're mounting large sections of decking, but using an adhesive such as a flexible epoxy. Approaching it this way means that there are going to be very few, if any, screws in this in the in the deck once it's installed. So because of this, a lot of the issues that are typically associated with an old school teak deck, they're they're pretty much a non-issue at this point. The company that I chose to work with on this project is Teak Decking Systems out of Sarasota, Florida. They're a company that I've worked with for over 10 years, and they are the pioneer as far as this method of construction for new teak decks. I'll include a link down below to their website, but did you happen to catch that? They're in Florida, and I'm in northern Wisconsin. So short of moving the boat all the way down to Florida, the only way to get this done is to make templates of the existing deck and ship them down there, and that's what I've been working on. So to get started on these templates, the first thing you saw me do was rip off a bunch of three inch wide strips of, well, essentially plywood. Um, it's two millimeter thick. Technically, I believe it's called utility board. Like if you're in a big box store, I think they're gonna have it labeled as a utility board. And then after I had all of my strips, I cut a total of, I believe it was six inches off of the ends. So that was gonna leave me with these strips being seven feet, six inches long. And that'll come into play a little bit later in this video when we're actually creating all this up and getting it ready to ship. But the six inches that I took off was done on two different cuts. So essentially what I was being left with was a bunch of three by three inch little square blocks. And again, that'll come into play here in a few minutes. So with the template material cut and ready to go, it's time to start mapping out this deck. Now the first thing, the absolute first step that I have to do is to establish the actual true center line of this deck because this is going to be the starting point for the entire template and everything is going to be branching off of this so this is a very critical starting point so basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to measure down two feet four feet and six feet down either side of the tow rail on both the port and the starboard side and then i'll measure between those points and divide that in half and that should give me my my center line now I'm going to take these, do these measurements, you know, in three or four different spots all the way down. And then hopefully if I'm lucky, all of those points will line up when I snap a chalk line. With the center line established, now I can start laying down some strips. And initially I'm going to lay down two, and they are both going to be running parallel to this center line. So this first one that I'm laying here is going to be just to the port side of the center. And the next one is going to be just to the starboard side. And these two strips are going to butt up to one another. And to hold these strips in place, I'm going to be applying some hot glue at either end of this, of this strip. In case you're wondering why I wouldn't want to use a stronger adhesive, you know, something like epoxy. Well, the reason is that I, I'm going to be able to want to pop these templates up off the, the deck without you know, either damaging the template or the deck. So hot glue works really well. It holds it strong enough to, you know, to be able to walk on it and it, it doesn't move yet I'm still able to come in with a putty knife when I'm all said and done and pop them free from the deck. As a little bit of added insurance to make sure that nothing shifts or moves on me, I'm gonna be applying what, I'm, what I call our glue tabs. And these are those three by three inch blocks that we cut off these longer strips here early in the video. So basically anywhere that there are gonna be two different sections of this template joining each other, these are the these glue tabs are gonna be what's gonna be holding them together temporarily.
Now on this particular boat, there are certain pieces of hardware that are mounted on top of these raised pads. And since areas like this are a fixed part of the deck, it's a lot easier to template around them right now. And then as I'm building the rest of the template, I'll be able to join all of this together. Going forward, I think this templating process is going to be pretty straightforward. But one thing that really needs to be kept in mind is that this is going to be placed inside of a, a 4x8 shipping crate. And so each of these sections of the template that we're making needs to be less than 4 feet wide and 8 feet long. And actually, you're better off having it a little bit uh, smaller than that, just so that it can fit inside the crate easily. Since this first section of template is a little over three feet wide and seven feet long, I need to add in some cross supports to help, I guess, to stiffen things up and, and make sure that it maintains the correct shape. So I'll add supports about every two feet down the length of this section of template. With the forward area done, now it's time to start working on a new section of the template. That really the best way to think about all this is you know, think of these different sections of the template as being individual pieces of a puzzle that eventually get all fit together. So right now, whenever we're starting a new section, you need to have a top and a bottom as well as the sides. So that's what I'm cutting right here. It's just a new, uh, for lack of better words, I'm going to call it a header. But it's a new header piece for this second section of template. Some of the cool things about making your templates like this is that, well, for one, it is extremely, extremely accurate. And also, it's lightweight, but it's also very versatile. You can use this method not just for mapping out a deck, but you can also use it for like mapping out bulkheads or transom or companionway openings and really anything or any area that's large size. I mean, you can adapt this to almost, almost any situation. Working my way to the head of the cabin, there's a wide sweeping arch that needs to get mapped out. Now, I could actually take a, a wide piece of this of these planks and try and scribe it and actually have it uh, follow that curve. But the easier way to do that is to use what are called fairing tabs. And you can see what I'm doing here. About every you know inch or two, I'm just kind of placing it down, and that is going to give me the well, it's, it's going to give me an exact copy of that arch. Now, since these side decks also have a little bit of curve to them, I can use that same approach here. Although, because the curve is much more gradual, I don't necessarily have to have these fairing points quite as close together. So here I'm just spacing them out eh, about every three or four inches. For the shipping crate, I'm going to make a basic frame using the 1x6 boards. Now, I could have easily used some or gotten away with using 1x4s, but I didn't think that the, the templates were going to stack in here as neatly as they did. But anyways, they did. Um, but 1x6 one by, uh, one by uh, basic frame, and then I'm going to cover the top and the bottom of this using half-inch OSB. Just to make sure that all of this survives a 1500 mile transport down to Florida, I'm, I'm screwing all of these individual pieces of template together. So I'm more or less locking them all into one solid piece because I honestly, I have no idea how this thing is going to be handled by a transport company. If they're going to be holding, you know, running it on its side or upside down or whatever, even though I mark it, 
it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going <laughs> to follow instructions. So if anything does shift in here, I want it all to be moving as one solid piece rather than as a bunch of loose individual pieces. I mean, it should be fine, but yeah, it's a little added insurance, I guess. And on that note, I think I'm going to wrap this up. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and share this with your boarding friends on Facebook or Twitter or however it's done now. And if you have any questions, comments, please leave those down below. And as always, thanks for watching. This has been a Boatworks Today production.